Hi, this is your Cornish pasty pastry recipe and that I'm going to show you. So I'm just going to do the pastry for those of you that want to make it at home prior to your lesson rather than buying it in. So in my bowl is 225 grams of plain flour, this kind. That's from Sainsbury's, so it's in a red bag. It might be in a different coloured bag elsewhere. So it's plain, that's the word you're looking for. We are going to add some baking powder. So if you end up with self-raising flour, it's not the end of the world. I should have got out of my cupboard before I started. Okay. So normally baking powder is um, what is added to plain flour to make it into self-raising and it wants one teaspoon of baking powder. Just checking it's baking powder in a bicarb. So one teaspoon and it wants half a teaspoon of salt. So it's not bread, no yeast in there, so I don't need to worry about my salt being in the wrong place or the right place. And then I need some unsalted butter. Um, in this case, I'm using salted because it's what I've got. So I should probably have thought about adding a little bit less salt. 65 grams. So it's on the scales. That's 39. 61. 65. So I'm going to now, using my knife, being very careful because it's a sharp knife, you should probably use a butter knife. Just chop it into little pieces because that makes it easier for me to rub it in. It's come straight out of the fridge, so it's quite hard. So I'm just chopping it up into pieces. Check it in, see I've chopped it all up. So now what I'm going to do is rub it together. So you should be able to see my bowl and this is me rubbing. So if I do it without the mixture in my hands, I'm basically going to rub from that little finger all the way across my fingertips. So it's that motion. And I just do it. Obviously, I've done this lots of times, so I'm quite quick with it. You might need a little bit more practice. So I'm just going to rub it gently between my fingertips and I'm breaking up the flour as I go. Uh, breaking up the butter as I go and combining it with the flour and the salt and the baking powder. So that's my job. And this is how we make short crust pastry. But it's an enriched short crust pastry because in a minute I'm going to add an egg yolk. What I should be doing is making it out of lard or half and half, butter and lard. Um, because that gives better pastry. It gives it a finer texture because the lard melts at a higher temperature and makes a nice fine texture but I'm not using lard I've just got butter that's what I've got with me today so that's what I'm using using all butter is fine and the texture will still be good and um, not as fine as lard but it'll still be good but it'll have a better flavor so butter gives a richer more um, sort of savory flavor and it'll give it a nice golden color so I'm going to give it a shake any lumps will come to the top I can deal with those and then get my egg in and some water. So it's one egg yolk. Which I'll deal with over here. So you should be able to just see. Let's position it. Yeah. Now I only buy large eggs. So it might be that I need slightly less water because it's a large egg, large. Free range, try and buy free range eggs if you're able to. And then what I'm gonna do, I'll crack the side of it. I'm gonna pick the bigger side and just let the yolk fall away and hold on to the, uh, let the white fall away into the bowl, keep hold of the yolk and put it in there. Can use that yolk at that white later somewhere else maybe for making a cake or maybe i want to make some meringues have a go i'm going to use my knife to stir the yolk in the best i can it'll just sort of disappear into the breadcrumbs and then i need to get started with my cold water 
In school, we tend to use the water fountain, so it's really cold. Um, and I'm just going to use a tablespoon measurer to add a bit at a time. I'm going to start off with two. And I'm checking constantly. So if you were doing this at school, you'd need to be thinking and looking the whole time. Not chatting, looking around. You just need to concentrate. Two tablespoons is nowhere near. I can tell that by the texture. So I've added two more. Now it's starting to stick together in lumps. So I'm going to get my hand in. And what I'm doing is I'm squeezing it and I'm seeing whether it will come together in one ball. So I'm scooping my hand around the side of the bowl and squeezing, scooping and squeezing. Now, at that point, most of it's come together, but there's still some dry bits. So I'm going to add one more tea tablespoon. And I'm going to hope and assume that that's enough. So scoop and squeeze, scoop and squeeze. Mm. Just needs a touch more, I think. So I'm just going to add less than a tablespoon and then it should be fine. Yeah, it's about right. I could probably even do with a touch more, actually. So I'm just going to add a touch more. So I've probably ended up with, I think that's five if you're counting tablespoons with the original recipe. So 65 ml, so I'm probably not far off. So you don't always have to follow the recipe exactly when it comes to adding water to your flour for pastry because sometimes you might need a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less. So now I can get all of that into one bowl, into one bowl. I'm going to take it out and on my work surface just very gently knead it just to bring it all together. Just to make sure that I'm happy that I've got a smooth ball of dough that I can then work with later. So I'm going to wrap that in cling film and put it in the fridge and leave it alone. And I'll show you in the next video how to make it into pasties.